Uh, hello, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome uh, to this webinar on how to become a good reviewer. Uh, my name is David Saras, and uh, together with my colleague from the EPD community, Education and Professional Development Committee, uh, Chan Yu, we'll be chatting together uh, this session. Uh, connected online in this platform, we also have uh, the speakers of this webinar. On the one side, Michael Nunch will be providing uh, uh, the, his talk on the perspective from uh, editor's point of view, and Nadia Pena from reviewer's point of view. And we also have connected uh, Stivali Serrano, who is the uh, public publications manager of from IHR Secretariat. Mm -hmm. um, now I would like to share my screen to briefly uh, provide some information about IHR. So um, Stivali, let me know whenever you can see uh, my screen. Great, thank you. So, uh, yeah, IHR uh, is a nonprofit association uh, built by researchers and from uh, and for researchers and engineers working in the field of higher environment. And uh, IHR invests in your uh, career uh, by means of organizing scientific and technical uh, meetings and events, uh, granting prestigious awards, developing a, a world class international networking platform and building a young professionals community, which are the, the future and the present of the association. Uh, and the EPD committee uh, is the technical, the IHR technical committee on education and professional development. And uh, these are some of the activities carried out by this uh, committee, like uh, the IHR Young Professionals Congress, which will be held uh, next November, the IHR Young Professionals Higher Environment Challenge, Challenge, which is ongoing uh, during and finalizing these days. Uh, hours like the JFK Student Paper Competition, uh, which will happen uh, on August in, in the World Congress in Vienna. And then technical seminars and webinars like, uh, like the present. Now I would like to pass the word to uh, Stivalit, who would like to say some words about uh, um, IHR journals. So Stivalit, uh, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the floor is yours. Thanks, David. I would like to take this opportunity for the ones who are not familiar with IAHR journals to invite you to take a look at our portfolio. Um, our journals coverage has been expanded since 1963, when our first journal was launched and it covers different focuses of the higher environment science, as well as a regional focus and even a young professional focus. Our journals enjoy of the reputation of a learned society that looks after a rigorous peer review process, selects the best editorial boards, and they are published by renowned international publishers like Teller and Francis and Elsevier. So whatever is your role, author, reviewer, reader, or an associate editor, have in mind that your contribution is highly appreciated because supporting IAHR journals is a way to move forward the higher environment, science, and engineering. You are very welcome to explore our journals under the section publications on our website to select any of them to be the home of your research. Now I pass the word to Chan Yu, who will be introducing the first speaker. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Chan Yu from IWHR China. And it's my honor to give a brief, a brief introduction of our first speaker, Dr. Michael Nones. He is associate, associate professor in the hydrology and hydrodynamics department at the Institute of Geophysics, Polish Academy of Science in Poland. He obtained his PhD from the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering Science in University of Padova, Italy. And before joining, the Institute of Geophysics Pass, he spent seven years between the University of Bologna, Italy, and Germany. He currently works on fluvial mono, uh, morphodynamics and geomorphology, combining new numerical modeling with the remote sensing. At present, he is also the editor-in-chef of JRBM, as well as the vice chair of the Committee on Education and Professional Development. And he, he will provide us from an editor's perspective. And let's welcome Dr. Michael Nones. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. And I'm 
Sure. I hope you can see uh, everything. Um, so yeah, basically the idea of today's uh, is to uh, pro provide you with some points to be discussed later on. I will start with the uh, what is most important for me as an editor, and then uh, Nadia will give you some feedback about the review uh, point of view. So the, the today's presentation I've divided in kind of a couple parts. First part is um, a checklist of what uh, I'm expecting from a reviewer, or at least what I would like to have in my review report, and then how uh, reviewers can help the editors. You know. So before uh, going to the checklist, I think uh, it's a good idea having a quick overview about what is the review uh, process. So basically from the very beginning where the authors submit the journals using different uh, submission systems, and then uh, this journal comes on the editor desk. Uh, basically, the editor can uh, reject uh, the, the paper if it doesn't fit the scope of the uh, of the journal, or if there are some issues regarding the plagiarism, or for uh, any justified reason. If the, mm, the manuscript is good enough to be sent out for external revision, then it comes uh, the reviewer turn. And in this case, the reviewers play a major role because all these uh, all their comments can be very useful to improve the quality of uh, a paper. And then this um, process iterates as as long as uh, reviewers are satisfied with the comments, and also the editor should be satisfied with the comments uh, and the feedback coming from the authors. And then uh, eventually the paper will uh, be published. So uh, from from now on, I will use. Uh, some information from Taylor and Francis, but uh, yeah, our general comments that apply to the, uh, yeah, to all the uh, all the journals. So first of all, um, I suggest giving a couple reads to the paper. The first read, like quick read, to see if it's really understandable what is reported in the um, in the manuscript, and um, if you see any real contribution to the field of study. And especially if you see that the manuscript is within your topic, because otherwise uh, as a reviewer, you should uh, refuse the, the revision because you are not, or you are not qualified enough for providing good uh, comments. And then once uh, you will have a clear, kind of clear picture of the overall uh, paper, you can start reviewing uh, point by point in very uh, detail, starting from uh, the title. Well, basically the title is the main part of, uh, of manuscript because it should attract readers, uh, but it should also express clearly what is the uh, is reported in the manuscript. So uh, if you have any doubts about the phrasing of the title or the meaning of the title, you can easily uh, give your comments. And then from the title, you move to the abstract, which should be a short and clear summary of the overall study, uh, pointing out what are the aims, what are the key methods, what are the main um, results and the uh, main conclusions of the study. Basically, the abstract should be a standalone uh, part of the manuscript. So if not, uh, reviewers are expected to give some feedback also on how to improve the abstract and what um, information should be uh, added or what information are unnecessary and it's better to keep up. Then uh, moving to the introduction, uh, basically the introduction is there for uh, summarizing the current state of the art and um, the limitation of previous studies, uh, which means also uh, what you are trying to address and uh, how do you want to overcome those limitations. And in, in, in practice, what is the novelty of your work? And the reviewers um, can help in, in this um, in develop, better develop this introduction by giving some uh, hints on what parts should be included, what parts are not clear, and if the novelty is clear enough or if the uh, methods are already used somewhere, or uh, also if the uh, Parts of the introduction were uh, already reported in other manuscripts. 
then uh, moving to the materials and metals section, uh, here are some uh, questions that our reviewers can consider in performing the uh, review. But basically, this section should report everything uh, that is needed for uh, doing the research. So the, the data and also the approaches and the um, from this section, uh, the reader should be somehow able to reproduce the research. So reviewers are basically asked for um, adding some comments about how to better phrase this uh, part if it's everything clear or if some uh, parts are missing. For example, if there are some missing uh, analysis of the statistics or if some um, methods are not well described or not well referenced. Uh, so the um, idea is that this part can uh, report everything is needed then for having the, uh, the results. And the results, as you can imagine, should be clearly presented and accurately presented and especially match the method. So uh, the reviewers um, can provide some uh, feedback about how the results are reported in terms of quality of the I don't know, figures, tables, or how, or if it's easily understandable, how those results derive from the previous uh, method section. Otherwise, um, some, some comments are respected and all, but eventually suggesting also some additional uh, analysis. And then uh, in the discussion and uh, the conclusions part, uh, what is reported in the results should be compared with the actual uh, state of the art to show that those results really fit the, um, the current findings in the research field. And in this, in this case, the reviewers can suggest um, additional analysis or additional uh, comparisons that can help authors in better developing the uh, manuscript and in uh, providing a more, uh, the results of the key conclusions in a clearer uh, way. So um, uh, some, some comments that can, uh, well, some parts that the reviewers can also comment are the uh, tables, the figures. For example, if the quality of the figures is good enough for being understood or if it's of, of, if what is reported is clear enough, but also suggest some uh, improvements. And can also keep an eye on um, case of data manipulation, which might be not that common in hydraulics, but in other uh, research fields, might be more common. So then uh, one point that should be, well, some points that should be really uh, considered before submitting the reports. Basically uh, from, from my editor, perspective, I am expecting like a brief summary of the articles and what are the key messages. So it's better to, uh, yeah, for me, it's easier to understand what the, the manuscript is about. And I also would like to read polite, clear comments, which can give uh, some uh, constructive uh, feedback to the authors. Even if those are negative comments, they should be uh, constructive because the uh, aim of the entire peer review process is to improve the quality of a manuscript. And uh, of course, more comments are uh, in the reviewer report, more, uh, well, the easier is the uh, author's work to improve the, uh, the manuscript. Then before submitting again, uh, read again the comments and try to be in the author's, uh, yeah, try to be the author's, and uh, see if you can understand what is uh, needed to improve the manuscript. And then also something that it might help is checking the grammar and spelling of the report so the authors cannot misunderstand what is reported. And of course, uh, as the peer review is usually a blind um, process, be aware, uh, well, double check to have, uh, keep out all the, um, all your contact and all the, uh, and all the comments should be confidential for the for the editors. So then, uh, what is uh, this? This was like a general picture of the review process and what might be some uh, question to be asked for uh, during the uh, review reports. And you will also see some 
some of these points in the next presentation. But what is more important for me, like from an editor perspective, is that uh, when I ask um, reviewers to review a uh, manuscript, uh, it would be great to have a reactive uh, feedback. So you can accept that the client invitation is uh, all volunteering job. So I fully understand the client, but it should be uh, reactive enough to avoid any delays in uh, providing or receiving some feedback. If you decline the invitation, it would be great to have some contacts of alternative reviewers. Then usually there are some weeks for providing comments and it, it's always good to respect deadlines because authors basically are waiting for um, the feedback from the reviewers. And of course, it, uh, it's better to have a complete record starting from uh, the title and moving along the manuscript to the conclusions so review, uh, authors can really benefit from, uh, from your feedback. And then the editor uh, will combine the um, comments coming from all the reviewers and uh, come out with a, with a um, complete review reports that usually include at least a couple, uh, the, the comments coming at least from a couple of reviewers. So then, uh, before concluding my uh, short presentation, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, while reviewers should be aware of the uh, ethics, there are uh, guidelines on ethics and please respect those guidelines in uh, performing your reviews. Um, then EHR journals have also words for best reviewers, for example, uh, JHR, as you will see in, uh, in the next presentation, or also journal of uh, equine hydraulics. Of course, uh, reviewers uh, are acknowledged at the end of the year and can request certificates for the uh, volunteering job. And also, most publishers have a partnership with partners, which might help in uh, developing your uh, career. And then, well, reviewer uh, paper is just the first step. Then you can consider joining the editorial board. I started reviewing papers and now I'm, yeah, I'm leading GRBF. So that's it uh, from my side. I hope it was clear enough. And if there are any questions, uh, please ask. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, for this uh, uh, great talk on uh, on uh, and an overview about the peer review process and uh, from uh, the editor's perspective. I would like now uh, to introduce the next speaker of this seminar, which is Dr. Nadia Pena. Uh, who will provide the reviewer's perspective. Uh, Nadia received her PhD in hydraulic engineering uh, for the environment and the territory in uh, 2013 from Calabria University, Italy, uh, where she specialized on CFD modeling. After her PhD, she worked in Lisbon, uh, Lisbon Palermo, Salento Universities. And since 2019, she's back in Calabria, focusing her research on turbulence in open channel flows and lecturing in courses such as fluvial hydraulics. Nadia is a very well, well qualified speaker for this uh, specific talk. As last year, she received the Willie uh, Hager Journal Best uh, Reviewer Award, which is granted to the most outstanding reviews of the papers submitted at the Journal of, uh, Journal of Hydraulic Research. So Nadia, it's uh, our pleasure to have you here in this webinar. And now the floor or better said the screen is yours. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I will share my screen. Okay, can you see it? Not yet. Mm, right. Okay. Now it's loading, I think. Yes, we can see it now. Thank okay. you. That's fine. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for having introduced uh, introduced me, and I would like uh, also to thank all the the organizers of the webinar and all the participants. Um, I hope that you will find uh, uh, this presentation useful and inspiring for your work as uh, as reviewers, of course. Um, in this presentation, I will try to give you some um, information and tips. Uh, uh, to be taken into account uh, in, uh, in, the review, in the review process, sharing with you uh, the methodology that uh, I usually follow. 
Uh, it is, of course, not a guide, but uh, it contains some important uh, um, points that should be not uh, overlooked uh, when doing uh, um, a review. So, yes, um, the, 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 sorry, okay. The revision process uh, uh, starts uh, when uh, you received an invitation by the editor or uh, the, the associate editor of um, a journal to act as, um, as a reviewer for a particular paper that falls within uh, uh, the, the specific area, your specific area of expertise. Uh, so you can uh, uh, choose to agree or decline uh, this, uh, this position. And generally, uh, the following three questions uh, uh, should be asked um, ourselves to decide uh, if uh, uh, this position could be accepted or not. So these three questions are the following. So does the article match my area of expertise or do I have a potential conflict of interest or uh, do I have time? So regarding the first question, uh, I suggest only accept if you feel um, that you can provide a high quality um, uh, review for, for the journal. Uh, as regards the second question, uh, disclose this to the editor when uh, you respond to this, um, to this request. And uh, the last, uh, this last question uh, is very important because uh, uh, reviewing can take uh, a lot of time so before you accept, you should be um, sure that you can meet the proposed uh, deadline. Uh, so you, you should reply to the invitation as soon as, you, as possible, because a delay in, uh, in your decision may slow down also the, the, entire, the entire review process. So uh, this is the start of the, 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 the review process. And uh, uh, the revision, Process, um, so if, if, if you accept, you, you have uh, to keep in mind that all the materials that you receive from the editorial office <clears throat> um, is a confidential uh, material. So you cannot share any details and uh, information about the review status with anyone as well as the content of the, um, of the paper itself. So uh, here mm, there are some, uh, some tips, some general tips that I usually follow when I prepare uh, my, my review. Uh, it is a sort of guidelines. Uh, so I will uh, show you uh, one by one uh, this, this, uh, these tips. Uh, first of all, I suggest you to read the manuscript, manuscript at least two times. The first one is to get a general impression of the work, and the second one to provide a critical evaluation of the, of the entire work. Uh, so at this stage, and especially after uh, you have read the, the manuscript for the first time, um, you may realize that uh, you accepted the, uh, too soon, too fast, um, the position of a reviewer, and uh, maybe the manuscript doesn't match your area of expertise, or you have a conflict of interest with this manuscript, with the with the authors um, of this uh, of this manuscript. So in this case, you should not. Uh, so in this case, you should notify these uh, these issues to the editor as soon as possible. Um, I usually check also the journal's home page to see uh, if uh, uh, it has a specific. Uh, guidelines to be followed and uh, which help uh, of course uh, the um, the structure to, to structure the um, the review um, another thing is to um, write your comments and suggestions with the aim of explaining how to improve the quality of the manuscript uh, rather than uh, simply uh, say that uh, something is wrong with uh, with the manuscript uh, or uh, uh, you don't like the way in which the data were processed. Um, so uh, you, you, you must explain how the authors may improve the, the quality of their work. And uh, another thing is that uh, I always think about the type of review that I would like to receive as an author. 
in fact, here there is a sentence that uh, um, summarizes this concept. So don't do unto others what you don't want done unto you. So uh, here there are other important uh, aspects that should be uh, taken into account. For example, uh, we have to verify that the article fits uh, with the scope of the journal, of course. And uh, after I read the manuscript for the first time, I usually mm, make a um, brief summary uh, of it to highlight the main, uh, the main findings and the issues that, that I found. This will be the first part of the um, review report that I will uh, give to, I will send to the, to the editor. Um, I usually, of course, number each uh, comment and uh, suggestion so that the authors can more easily respond to them. And uh, I try to be more specific as possible to indicate uh, statements, paragraphs uh, that need attention and clarification by the authors. Um, I um, also don't focus um, to, to the grammars, uh, to the grammars, so to the grammatical errors, mistakes that the uh, authors may 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 do, um, because I um, keep my review focused on the on the research instead. If the paper is full of uh, such errors, uh, I usually tell the, ed the the editor and ask whether professional copy editing is possible. And uh, mm, I consider all, also a personal list of questions uh, based uh, on my experience as an author uh, that can guide me in uh, reviewing the article because, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, in my field, uh, the most important thing is uh, how to um, perform the, uh, the, the experiments because uh, uh, from, from this, it, the, the, the results uh, 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 will be uh, will, will be affected, of course, by this um, the way in which the experiment is done. Um, so uh, usually, okay, um, it it should be uh, this should be done by all the reviewers. So, um, so, so we we must avoid asking authors to cite irrelevant or our own papers to inflate our citation record or H index. And uh, we should keep in mind that um, you may need more time to study possible new articles that you have so far neglected. So if you realize that you need more time to um, finish your, uh, your review, uh, ask for a reasonable extension of the deadline to complete it. But of course, a reasonable ex extension could be uh, one week, uh, but not more than this, I hope, I think. And I usually also try to be as objective as possible. And uh, another important th thing is that uh, uh, as publication uh, pressure continues to increase, uh, so do also the attempts at plagiarism or even the use of artificial intelligence for creating a scientific paper. Uh, so in this case, you should inform as soon as you can the, the editor and uh, at the same time, inform the, inform the editor uh, if you found the, that simultaneous sub submission uh, to multiple journals was made. It happens that, it, happen, it happens to me also that two um, journals sent me uh, the same uh, paper, so I had to uh, inform the, the editor of this uh, multiple uh, submission uh, by, the, by the authors. So here there are uh, other specific uh, tips um, that are divided uh, for um, and, and uh, differenti differentiated um, for each section of the, of the paper. Uh, so, for example, I uh, usually suggest the authors uh, uh, to improve the title uh, of the manuscript uh, if uh, it is not representative of the research topic, or uh, as regards the abstract, if it does not uh, capture the main research findings, or the introduction. Uh, I suggest to modify and improve the introduction if the literature review is too superficial or there are 
uh, key citation missing or excessive citation, or if the objectives are not clearly defined uh, together with the novelty and uh, the originality of the study, uh, which should be declared in the introduction because uh, it, it should be it should be capture the uh, the attention of the of the reader. So as regards the materials and methods. Um, I usually suggest to modify and make changes if the experiments and methodology are not uh, well described, if uh, there is missing information on uh, uh, factors that can influence the, the results and the correct ex execution of the experiment, or if there are also errors in the application of the proposed uh, methodology. Um, as regards the, the results, uh, I suggest modification if they are not reliable and uh, if the declared objective, objectives in uh, the introduction and the, in, the, in the abstract have not been uh, reached. Um, and also check the tables and figures and propose modification if their number and clarity are not appropriate for uh, the data analysis and for the journal uh, um, journal standard. And uh, considering the discussion, I suggest usually the uh, suggestions if the authors uh, are, have not clearly emphasized the strengths of their study and the, the related limitation. And finally, uh, considering the conclusion if the interpretation of the, the, of the results is not uh, supported by the data and the study design. So uh, in this case, uh, sorry, okay. So you have to uh, to to wait, and uh, at this stage you have to wait and read again the the manuscript, and uh, after that, uh, sorry, I don't know where I'm. Okay. <laughs> Um, at this stage, you have to uh, to stop, uh, as I told you, and uh, read again the, the manuscript, uh, and giving you time to, to think about it. Um, and after that, you are ready to sit down to write your your review. That I usually uh, divide uh, divide in uh, three sections, as I told you before. The first one section is uh, the the summary of the uh, of the manuscript. And uh, then uh, I, divide, I divide my comments into major and minor comments. And uh, again, I read it, uh, the, the report and ask myself whether I was, uh, I, I really made a fair assessment. So uh, after that, uh, I can suggest my recommendation. You know, there are three options. You can suggest a rejection of the manuscript, a revision, or the acceptance of the manuscript as, um, as is. So uh, you can suggest uh, a, a rejection if uh, crucial problems, uh, uh, the, the crucial problems that you found are not fixable. So you should explain your reasoning in your report, giving, of course, scientific uh, justifications. And uh, um, you can suggest the revision of the manuscript if uh, uh, crucial problems uh, can be corrected in, uh, in, a, in a revision. So you have to provide scientific explanation of why the issues are critical and uh, propose the, 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 the changes. And uh, finally, uh, the acceptance of the, of the paper can be suggested when uh, the issues found uh, don't make the paper unpublishable. And so you can suggest uh, some, some comments that the authors can uh, uh, accept or, or not. So uh, after that, the editor uh, can decide uh, what, the, what, what, uh, the, what is the, the actual uh, um, decision uh, on uh, on this uh, on the on the article whether to accept or reject the the article itself uh, so the editor will weigh all the views of the of the reviewers and make 
call for another opinion or ask the author to revise the, the, the paper before making a final, um, a final decision. Uh, so if uh, the manuscript uh, is revised again by the, the author, uh, then the editor will send you another, uh, another time the, the manuscript to you. And in this case, uh, you should not add requests that you could have reasonably asked for in the first round uh, uh, of, the, of the report. Otherwise, you should explain, explain why you made a mistake in the first round. So this is the final step of the reviewing process uh, from the reviewer side. And um, so to me, um, the most important thing as a reviewer, it's um, to, to, oh, sorry, it's to prepare a positively constructive and uh, objective report uh, that can really make a difference for the, for the author. Uh, despite it, sometimes uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this process can be seen as a time-consuming activity, but there are also some benefits uh, associated with uh, peer reviewing because you are the first to uh, see new research in, uh, in, your, in your area and you can get inspiration for your own, uh, for your own research. So, the next time you see an email from the editor, don't be scared and think about to accept or decline uh, to revise a, a paper. So this is from my side. Uh, thank you very much, Nadia, for this uh, nice talk and for these very useful uh, tips and tricks. Um, but I will incorporate myself now when uh, when reviewing papers. Uh, so. Uh, now is moment to uh, to open the floor for discussion. So uh, I I would like to invite our audience, our participants, to write in the Q and A, uh, so they can uh, so uh, we can try to cover the potential questions that may come up from the audience side. Um, I see that uh, we already have a couple of questions in the Q and A from uh, Amrit Sharma. Uh, so the first question is uh, if uh, the author has a presenting novel idea, but there is less coherence in the introduction part, whether to accept or reject. Um, yeah, I think maybe this question is more for uh, Michael as editor's perspective, but yeah, feel free to answer any of you. Well, I think I can start. Uh, it, it, a manuscript should be readable, it should be understandable to be sent out for external review. So if the introduction is not that coherent, but the manuscript itself is a kind of thing understandable. It might pass and then sent out to the uh, reviewers. Then it depends on the comment, basically. If the idea is good, but it's too, well, the, the overall structure is not really clear. As an editor, I would ask the authors to rephrase the manuscript, to restructure the manuscript before sending it out to, to the reviewers. Basically, because the reviewers are giving the uh, time for free. So I'm not, I prefer not to uh, bother them with manuscripts that are too confused. But I will give a consideration on all the manuscripts as long as they are uh, within the scope of the journal and uh, eventually have the uh, authors in better structuring the manuscript or in better developing the manuscript before uh, the revision process starts. Thank you very much, um, uh, Michael. So uh, Nadia, would you like to add anything else? Uh, Concerning this question? Yes, I usually uh, don't go for the um, rejection way. So I try to uh, give the opportunity to the authors to uh, to change and modify the, the the part that doesn't have coherence with the the the, the idea of the manuscript itself. So uh, yes, the revision should be the the solution. I think. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, we have a second question. Uh, how good is if uh, uh, author has mentioned multiple citations rather than specific K one or two citations? So yeah, this is uh, related to um, how many uh, citations shall we give for a specific issue? Because sometimes it's difficult not to to give. Um, I mean, to to decide up to what point uh, shall I provide too many citations? No. So yeah, I think this question is for um, 
both of you, I, I guess. As before, I can start. Uh, basically, it depends. I mean, all the suggestions should be relevant. Um, I know that some topics have a bunch of uh, research behind, but we, citing more uh, papers doesn't mean that what is written in the manuscript is actually new. So um, I, I would say there's no specific limit, but too many citations probably hinder with the uh, the subject of the study or yeah, the significance of the study. Mm -hmm. um, then it depends. Uh, of course, I, I I I will check the citations if they are really relevant, and also the reviewers are expected to, cite, to check the citations if they are relevant. Really so maybe uh, in, during the revision process, some excessive citation or some useless citations can be added to be removed. Okay. Um, also, it depends a bit on the on the field. No, there are fields that maybe they are more dynamic in providing a, a larger number of citations, and fields that they are more narrow and more specific. To the point, right? So, uh, yeah, I would say maybe it's also field dependent, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's topic related. Uh, we, yeah. we cannot really give a specific answer. I, I would say relevant citations are good. Bunch of citations just because we would like to increase the numbers or the, our statistics uh, is not good. Okay, uh, here is an interesting one from uh, Ariana Barrani. Uh, that uh, reviewing for a conference, sorry, something moved. So, uh, does reviewing for a conference differ from reviewing from a, for a journal? So maybe Nadia, as, as a viewer, uh, do you review? Uh, do you provide the same quality review uh, for a journal than for a conference? Yes, I try to do that, but uh, of course, uh, uh, the novelty, maybe the novelty of the, the of a paper that it is, it is presented the, uh, on a conference, maybe um, less than uh, a paper that it is published in a journal. So this is the only thing that I, I think that. Uh, can change in my uh, reviewing process. So it's only this. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add, uh, Michael? Well, not really. I mean, probably it also saw the, the length of the uh, manuscripts will change because usually conferences just require like short paper. Mm -hmm. but, and so it's kind of impossible to report everything in a short paper. But apart from that, I think. Well, yeah, the questions are more or less the same to be, you know, question to be asked. Maybe I have then a, a, a second question because uh, when reviewers are asked to um, um, to review papers for a conference, it's because probably they become to they be, they, be, they are part of the uh, scientific committee of that conference, and eventually they need to review in short period uh, a number of papers, not only one, and maybe five papers. So if suddenly you are flooded with five papers to review, also in terms of time management, it's difficult to, to manage, right? Because it's quite a workload. It, does this affect the quality of the review sometimes? What, what, what's your opinion about that? Well, I would say no, because you are aware of what is going to happen if you accept to be part of the scientific uh, committee. So you should somehow yeah, schedule your time on that. And you can eventually ask for an uh, extension of the deadlines or refuse to, to, to review some papers. So mm -hmm. I would say it should not affect them. Maybe it might happen, but generally not. I think. But yeah, I was not yet going to do this. Um, yeah, then, then there is a factor no, that uh, in, in a journal paper, uh, there are several iterations. Right, and in a conference, maybe one, two max, no, because there is a deadline and the conference will happen. So, uh, yeah, the, the time pressure is also a factor, I would say. Okay, so uh, another question from Afra uh, How to increase the possibility to be a reviewer in different journals as a young scientist? So, uh, yeah, wow. as a young scientist, maybe you want to be part of the reviewer board, not only for one journal, but several, diversify. Uh, is there any trick there? Well, uh, editors are looking for good reviewers. 
So uh, yeah, contacting directly the journals with some CVs and writing uh, papers as well can increase the, the chance to get a review, uh, yeah, to review papers there. Um, of course, uh, as an editor, I'm looking for the best reviewers as possible. But uh, in, in some topics, as uh, Nadia pointed out, there are just a few people. So uh, it's also difficult to get uh, good reviewers. So if uh, you would like to become reviewers, uh, I suggest contacting a journalist. There are many open, uh, there are many journals that have uh, reviewers list and you can subscribe, give your expertise. And then the editors, so yeah, give the choice. Okay. Uh, then uh, from uh, Adina Moraru, uh, journals uh, oftentimes cover multiple uh, broad topics. As an editor, how do you know if a manuscript is within the scope of the journal? Well, um, as an editor in chief, I generally deciding somehow shaping the, the, the scope of the journal. So I'm kind of aware of what this journal is about. Then there are a lot of associate editors because I, I, as an editor in chief, I don't know everything. So I can ask uh, also for, uh, to the associate editors about their opinion and their coherence with the uh, scope of the journal. So generally, we decide on that be before uh, asking the reviewers, that's like, uh, yeah, we check the manuscripts uh, against the, the scope of the journal. So it's uh, the task of the whole editorial board and not only one only person deciding the scope. Exactly. Right? Okay, uh, a question from uh, Taufik. Um, uh, thank you for all these follow-up tips. Uh, I want to know uh, for a manuscript, for example, two reviewers gave comments. Uh, one reviewer gave minor comments, but other reviewers gave major comments. Then uh, what can be the decision of the editor? So when, yeah, when there is this controversy between uh, two uh, reviewers, um, how is this managed? Well, it's not an, uh, an average. So it depends on what, what are the comments, because sometimes it depends on the reviewers. Some reviewers can suggest minor and give a lot of comments. Some others measure and just write a couple of sentences. So it's a different feeling of the reviewers. There. It's a personal uh, aspect. So the editor can decide depending on what the reviewers uh, comments are. And also can consider or reviewing the paper uh, as well, or ask to a third reviewer if there are uh, issues. In this example, it's just between minor and major, but it happens that we receive accept and reject uh, decisions from the yeah, comments from the uh, reviewers. So we are looking for another uh, opinion, generally. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Michael, I think this question is more for uh, Nadia. Uh, this question is for, from uh, Avera. Uh, which parts of the article contents uh, need more emphasis during the review time? So normally when you're tackling a, the revision of a paper, where do you focus um, more time in during your revision? Uh, sure, on the results and uh, on the description of the experiment and methodology used, and also on the results. Uh, because yeah, the, there is the, the most, the, 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 this part should be the most novel in the, in the paper. Of course, the introduction may be similar to other uh, documents, other papers that cover the same, uh, the same topic, but they should be always different. They couldn't, they couldn't uh, be the same, of course. Uh, the, the others should, the others should uh, increase uh, the literature review. And uh, so they, could, they couldn't be the same of other papers. So I spend more time on uh, the methodology and the results discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nadia. Maybe the next one is also for you, or uh, yeah, for both of you eventually. Uh, thank you th uh, from uh, Lorena Lombana. Thank you for these insightful presentations. My question is, uh, what are the main advantages of becoming a reviewer? Ah, okay. <laughs> The advantages uh, are, uh, I told in my presentation that uh, the most important thing is that, is that you are the first to know uh, the new research in your field. So you, 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 are the, you have a lot of advantage, advantages in that. 
And uh, you can also take inspiration from this, uh, this new research. So this is the most important thing to me. And also it allows me to study and this the, the thing that I, I, I do in my life. So yeah, this is the advantages. We don't have uh, economical uh, advantages. So this is the, the most important thing to me. Great, thank you. Uh, so, um, yeah, before uh, Nadia, you also mentioned that you put a lot of focus on discussion of uh, results. Uh, so, Avera has also a, a question in these uh, lines. Uh, if the results and discussion of some papers are totally different and all other contents are same, um, is ca can this be considered plagiarism? I don't know uh, what. It is what uh, Abera mean with uh, the same. They could be similar, but not totally the same. But if the results, the data, the data presented in the paper, the results in discussion are different, I don't think that it could be uh, considered uh, as a plagiarism, but it should be improved a lot to be published. Yeah, maybe. Um, um... Um, I'm, I'm wondering because there are these uh, um, these tools to check plagiarism that they provide you a similarity index. If a similarity index is higher than a certain threshold to be considered plagiarism, let's uh, let's say 20%. I'm not sure which are the, the right thresholds. Uh, but the paper is presenting uh, different results. Uh, would you still consider? Maybe this is more a question for Michael. Uh, but uh, would you still consider this plagiarism or would you make an exception even though it has higher than 20% or whatever the threshold is of uh, similarity index? Well, actually, it depends on the topic. I mean, 20% is like a number. Uh, so in, in some topics, it's really different, difficult to rephrase things. So it might happen that uh, the, uh, the similarity index is really high. I would say, the results and discussion should be different, but also the introduction should be different from other papers as well, the conclusion. So uh, as, as Nadia said, there should be some novelty somewhere. It's not only repeating experiments with a different, uh, more different data set, but doing the same uh, analysis. It might be difficult to have papers published in this way. Uh, also because the, uh, the, the number of submissions is really increasing. So all the editors are looking for uh, some novelty. Um, and it's not only about plagiarism, it's about reporting new outcomes in general. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, then we have uh, questions are coming up. So uh, and we have another question from uh, Krishna. Um, it was very interesting and knowledgeable for both uh, the presentations. Um, please share the recorded video. Uh, we will share the video in, in uh, IHR library. Um, Thank you very much for the distinguished speaker. Okay, uh, what are the main criteria to receive the best reviewer award? So this is a question for you, Nadia, if you know the criteria behind. No, I really don't know because uh, I was uh, awarded uh, without knowing that. So I made uh, my my review during the, the year uh, 2019, 2020, and then I was nominated. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the, the most important thing is to do a good review. I can add some information if you wish regarding the, this award. This award is... Mm, provided to the most outstanding reviews. It's also considered the number of reviews done for the, for the associate editors, the age, and also the um, timely. I mean, that the reviewer uh, fulfills with the deadlines. Um, and these are the main criteria. Okay, and and uh, just a question: do, do you know if uh, the um, the candidates need to apply for this uh, award, or they are just called? Uh, they are selected. Apply? They are selected by the editorial board through the reviewers of the last two years. Okay, mm -hmm. so there is no self nomination. And normally the, the award is granted during the World Congress, no? which will, in this case, will happen during August in Vienna, right? In Vienna, that's right, yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, I hope uh, this answered your uh, question, Krishna. And uh, Elena Simao, 
Okay, thank you both for your presentations. Uh, great. I think I answered all the, uh, I mean, I, 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 I read loud all the questions from the chat box and we could cover all of them. Maybe there is another one, sorry. Avera Misanya. Uh, there are different recommendations by different reviewers, which uh, for a part, uh, how it can be decided by editor. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think this this issue was more or less covered. Now, when there are different uh, recommendations and uh, levels of reviews, uh, minor, major, between different reviewers, uh, I think you already answered this question, Michael, if you want to add anything else. No, uh, basically what, what I usually editors do is yeah, seeing what is reporting the, uh, in the report from the reviewers, evaluating these reports, and if uh, there are any doubts, inviting other reviewers to, to have a kind of common uh, idea at the end, yeah, more clear idea at the end. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that's all from the Q and A. Um, I, I also have uh, maybe a question because when. Uh, um, uh, during the registration process, no, the participants they were asked to answer a survey, and in the questionnaire, it was asked how many uh, papers submit per year, and then how many papers they review per year. Um, and we could observe in this answer some different ratios, no, and different numbers, but also different ratios between uh, papers submitted and papers reviewed. Uh, would you recommend any specific uh, ratio, like uh, every uh, every paper I submit, three revisions, something like this? Well, uh, basically, I'm asking two to three reviews per paper. So uh, an author can expect, well, out of one article submitted to perform a couple of reviews, and it, it's kind of sustainable uh, environment. Because if uh, there are no reviewers, also the authors have problems in getting published. But yeah, I mean, it depends on the topic, it depends on the time. Uh, uh, we need good reviews, not just reviews. Yeah, of course, it's not just a matter of quantity, no, but the quality of the reviews. So now I'm wondering, Nadia, is, is this the ratios you are uh, uh, applying as, as uh, author, but also as a reviewer? No, I I don't have a standard ratio to be followed. So I, it depends from the request that I I received from the different journals. I can say that last year um, I reviewed about uh, fifteen papers, and I submitted uh, maybe nine papers. So I don't know. This is was what happened last year. I don't know next year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is quite a number. <laughs> okay. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, no other questions are coming up in the Q and A, and uh, I'm watching at the at the clock, and I see it's already at uh, 3 p.m. So maybe time to close the session. Um, yeah, I think uh, thank you again, Michael and Nadia. And Nadia. It's been a, a pleasure and and very useful. As I mentioned, you provided both of you uh, a, a number of themes and ideas that. I will apply myself, myself as a reviewer, but also as an author. No? So yeah, suggestions like, um, for instance, how to have uh, more dynamic uh, revisions uh, to be uh, reactive to, uh, to the invitation, like uh, Michael suggested, no? to, to answer as soon as possible. And if you need to ask for a deadline, just do not hesitate and ask for that deadline. Um, also, the, uh, very important uh, what Nadia mentioned to have to do constructive reviews. Uh, there is this universal rule that you mentioned, Nadia. I like it very much. But uh, don't do to others what you wouldn't do for yourself. No, something like this. I think this is a, a very important, like a life maxim. No, but also spe especially in the context of a peer review process. And then also the, the number of tricks and tips that you, you 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 provide to make it easier for for authors from reviewers' perspective. So yeah, thank you all very uh, to both of you for all this uh, advice. Uh, anything else to add, uh, Michael and Nadia? Would you like to to add some final reflection? No, um, nothing to to add. Yeah, if there are any questions uh, coming up later, I'm, I'm 
open to discuss with some potential authors and potential reviewers, whatever they would like to. Okay, great. So, uh, um, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Nadia and Michael. And also, uh, thank you, Chan, for co chairing this session with me and Steve Led Serrano uh, to, to support this session from IHR Secretariat and also for the information you gave uh, concerning the IHR journals. And uh, yeah, also to mention that uh, the, the video recording will be available at uh, IHR Library and also. Uh, Certificates of attendance, they are available under request. Okay, so if you want a certificate of attendance from this webinar, do not hesitate. In the in the website of the webinar, it's explained where you need to uh, get in touch. You need to write an email to IHR Secretariat and they will give you information about this certificate. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, have a nice uh, day, a nice evening to all of you and we are in touch. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.